Come on, you hear me? This is Edwards! What do you want? This is Edwards. I know I ask you this like every week, but would you like to ride the church with me? Oh, come on, Mrs. Edwards, you'll like my church. We have some hot music. It may not be what you're bumping at all, but it's hot. We get down. What do you say, Mrs. Edwards? Oh, I suppose. I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me, it's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edwards, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. <sighs> okay, here we are. cups of coffee. How are you guys like this foyer or what? I mean, seriously. 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 It's awesome. <laughs> Love it. I do. It's really, really cool. Um, you know it took volunteer power to make that happen. Seriously. Like, I want to just put a special shout out to Ron and Brandon Keith, the father and son duo. That have been just consistently added day after day after day, making that happen, and it's amazing how just in five days you come back and it's like boom, the wall is down and insulation's up and things are happening. It's really cool. So the next few phases uh, should happen over the next week or two. We're going to bring some sheetrock and we're going to level out the floor. We hope to get some tile in there maybe, and so it's really cool. And I'm really excited because we're making more room for people to hang out and connect. And just, man, I love, kind of sprang on you for a second. If I wasn't the pastor of this church, I would go to this church. Because this is, this is a really, really awesome church. And what makes a church awesome is the people. You guys, dead mind. That's awesome. You guys are stinking awesome. Seriously. Like, I love our people. We had so much fun. Wednesday night, we've, um, we just, just hang out with people and talking and visiting. And I just got to thinking, I love our people. I just, I couldn't have asked God for a better group of people. Our church is just unbelievable. And so I'm just very thankful. That's just a side note. That's extra credit. I just love our church. I love our people. So give yourselves a hand right now. Sort of. Awesome. Well, we're in the series Contagious. Everybody say Contagious. Contagious. How many of you guys have ever seen people with these on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What does it usually tell you about a person when they wear these? That you know, maybe they're contagious. I don't even know how to talk to these things on. Hold on, I know what it tells me. All right, how many nurses do we have that you guys wear these every day? Right there, Stacy. I don't know how you do this. Okay. Maybe there we go. Wrong. Okay. You know. <laughs> hey. Have you, you look guys, like an alien or something? Oh, I don't think we're doing it right. Am I doing it right? 
right? Stacy, is this right? Is it upside down? Better. Okay. <laughs> Operating in surgery? <coughs> totally get it. Mowing the yard? A little bit out there, but I get it. You ever seen a dude walking down the street with one of these on, not doing anything? <laughs> That's freaky. <laughs> Seriously. It's like, it's like, do I have something or do you have something? <laughs> Either way, you know. Either way, I'm staying away from you. So you don't get what I have, and I don't get what you have. I don't know what you have, but that's. Have you ever seen that? How many of you all have ever seen anybody just walking down the street doing nothing with one of these on? Like that's weird. Yeah. Seriously. You know what? Like last days kind of stuff. Like the world's coming to an end. Those are hot. Or maybe you honestly have um to keep all the germs away. I thought maybe. Hey, maybe you know somebody. Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe they have something. I'm sorry. Sorry. Either way, either way, we're I talking. I don't mean to be disrespectful. You're all over the place. Right? I'm sorry. You are. All right, Get mute him. him. Just mute him so we can move on. All right. We are in the series Contagious, and we've been talking about the mission that Jesus gave after he ascended. That mission was called something called the Great Commission. It was the Great Commission, Matthew 28. 19 and 20. We're going to read it this morning again. It says this, Therefore, go and make disciples. Did he say sit on your duck? No. He said go. And that means as you are going. Go. That is as you're going to work, as you're going to school, as you go to the grocery store, as you go to the bank, wherever you are going to go, you are to be doing something, and that is making disciples. What's a disciple? A disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. You ever play follow? It takes a leader to play that game, doesn't it? It doesn't take a bunch of people following. It takes a leader. God is looking for people who will stand up and be leader in the church today. He's looking for people who will stand up in the world and stand out and make disciples. Let's go on. He says, make them of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I am giving you. That's my favorite and part. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you know that Jesus didn't just give a commission and say, good luck? He didn't say, here's what you're supposed to do. Now, um, good luck with that. I'm going to go watch it from heaven. He said, I will be with you always. Always. You're never alone. So during this series, we've been talking about the fact that once you become a believer, once you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, you have a purpose. Yes. If you didn't have a purpose, God would have just said what, Brad? <laughs> the moment you got saved. That's right. You would be raptured out of your city. Worked on that one all week. That was good. <laughs> that would be really cool, but here's the deal. Jesus left the mission now with us. Can I say something? Yeah, no. So his mission becomes our mission. The Great Commission is our mission. The church's mission. Who is the church? Uh, we are. You are. We are. It's not the building. It's the people. We are the church. It is our mission. And it's our mission personally to pursue what God has birthed in our hearts and in our destiny to do. And that is contagious. So what we've done is we've just kind of reworded a little bit to just really get to the very core of our heart, something we can run with, something that we can memorize, something that we can just, just kind of engrave on the tablet of our hearts, and that's this, to lead people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious. To lead people. Can we make people follow Christ? No. But we can inspire them. We can, we can provide them everything they need to get to that point where they make a decision to follow Christ, right? So we're, we're all about getting people in that position to where they make that decision to have a relationship with Christ, all right? But that relationship is really about three things. It's, it's, it's three, there's three things that go into that kind of relationship. Three things. That relationship is not a normal relationship. It's a relationship... That is real. Right. It's life changing. And it's contagious. It's real. It's life changing. And it's contagious. We all know people who go to church. Right? 
We know people who feel like they probably have a knowledge of God, but they don't really know God, right? We know people that say they have a relationship with God, but it's not real. You know what I'm saying? And, and we know that it's not life-changing because their life hasn't changed and it's remained the same. Their language has remained the same. Their thinking, their attitude, their ambitions, everything is still the same. And if there's no change, then God has not done this work in our life. And last week we talked about how we become a brand new creation in Him. The old things are passed away. The old Brad is gone. The new Brad has begun. Behold, all things become new. That's when you know you really, really, really got it. That's when you know it's clicked and it's stuck with you. When there's life change and it's real. And that's what we're all about at Mount River Church. We're not about religion. We're all about relationship. So today, we want to just kind of conclude this series finale with something very special, alright? We have some very awesome guests this morning. They're going to bring the word. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You see, nobody has uh, a more impactful, um, more uh, greater, um, I don't know, gift, if you will, to share the gospel with people. There are people who have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that are contagious, right? And so we have people in this church. All of you guys have a story. God has done something amazing in your life. I, I want to read, before I, before I introduce them, I go to that, I want to read the scripture. It's in, refresh my memory, I think it's Mark 5, 18 through 20. Let's look at that. Bingo. As Jesus was getting to the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. Check out this story. Just in a nutshell, really quick, Jesus gets out of the boat. He lands on this shoreline. This guy is demon-possessed. He's been chained up, right? And he's been breaking the chains with his bare hands. How many of you guys that would kind of freak you out? Yeah. So this guy was demon-possessed. He spends most of his time howling like a dog and cutting himself with rocks. And the city had exiled him. They banned him from town. He lived outside of town. And he was just a mess because he was filled with demons. Right? And so Jesus heals this guy. And the demons are talking to him. He's like, what's your name? My name is Legion because there's lots and lots of us inside of this guy. And they're begging him. Jesus, please don't send us off into nowhere, Bill. Please, please, please. Don't send us into the abyss. And Jesus says, that herd of pigs over there, which, did you know there's about 2,000 pigs in that herd? With one unhappy farmer. 2,000 <laughs> Oh, I never thought that. I heard that story. Do you know how much money that was that ran off the cliff full of demons? My word, no wonder they were mad and they wanted to run Jesus out of town. They lost a lot of money. They were freaking out. And they were like, the dude just sent demons into a pig. We don't, we're scared. So they, they told Jesus he had to go. He's like, my pleasure, I'm out of here. But the guy was healed. He was in his right mind. He's sitting there, now fully clothed, which gives you an indication of what he was like before. Naked, broken, chains, blood, howling like a dog. The guy was a wreck, okay? He was a wreck. So now he's fully clothed. He's in his right mind. And he's so happy because these demons are gone. And he can just, he can get back to life the way he knew it before. He was healed. And he was so excited about what Christ has done. He was begging Jesus, please, let me go with you. Let me get in the boat. Let, let, let me be one of your disciples. And he's like, no. He was like, take this excitement that you have. You had this real encounter with God. Now take this excitement and go to your town and tell all your family, all your neighbors, all your friends, co-workers, right? Everybody, tell them all about what I've done. Because guess what? That excitement that you experience when you have had a real encounter with Christ is life-changing and it is contagious. And we all have stories of amazing things that God has done in our lives. Some of you maybe are just beginning on this journey. Some of you guys have been at it for a while. But we all have an amazing, amazing story that we can share of who Jesus is to us and what He can do for somebody else. So, so really... It's just as simple as this. It's about sharing the excitement of who Christ is and what He's done. So this morning, we're going to just let some people share. And we have some amazing people in this church that have that contagious spirit that I'm talking about. And they are going to bring 
that excitement to you this morning? Sit and watch. Um, I started coming in August to Mountain Rivers Church, and I this is my first year teaching eighth grade, and first year teachers are stressed to the max. So um, I had been teaching about two weeks and was going home crying almost every night, and. I had told Dustin's mom that I just needed to go to church that Sunday. It was Saturday, and I said, I'm going to church tomorrow. I don't know where, but I'm going. And she said, why don't you go over there across the bridge and try Mount Rivers Church. Christina Moon had actually told her about it, and she hadn't been yet. So she said, you go scope it out, and you let us know what you think. So I just bawled and bawled and bawled the entire first time that I was here, the first service. And... Um, came back to Dustin's mom's house and told her about it. She said, oh my goodness, well, I guess I better go try it out with you next time. So the next week she came and she bawled and bawled and bawled the first time that she was here. And I don't know, before we knew it, Brad was coming with her and then Dustin started coming with me. And now my parents are coming too. And God is just moving mountains in our family. Um, in such a short amount of time. It's really, really cool to just sit back and watch. I think God has just done little by little works in our home, in our family, um, from the music we listen to, to how we parent, to choices that we make and how we spend our money. I mean, just, it's been a ripple effect in every aspect of our lives. And, um, and I get that from the message we hear. The example that is set here. Um, and you know, your guys' motto is that God's presence is our priority. And that's clearly evident because for me to come in and just completely bawl. And it, it doesn't happen very often that I don't cry when I'm here. And so you just feel it. And you know, Janet says that too. You just feel it when you're here. And you guys have said before too that um, the worst thing about if we died and we didn't get to go to heaven, the worst part would be that we wouldn't be in God's presence anymore. And that is so true. It's yeah. what gets us through the day. It's fun here. It's fun Maybe, you know. Fun We actually never went to a church where you actually had fun, I guess you'd say. So. Camo shirts and yeah, jeans and boots. And yep. Yep. Certainly different than any other church we've ever been to. <laughs> We heard about MMC from an acquaintance of ours. She's now a very dear friend, but we were had recently moved here and we were dropping off some items at a benefit yard sale that she was part of. And she asked us um, where we were gonna go to church. And I didn't have the heart to tell her that. I wasn't interested in church. I never had gone to church. And I really wasn't planning on doing that now. So we just politely listened to her and she told us about Mountain University Church. Came home. For the first time in a long time, I did not resent coming to church. And like I said, came home. And you can ask her. I'm really hard-headed about things like that and wasn't interested. I came more or less to appease other people. And when I got here, I'm here, I'm home. And it was awesome. Actually, our first days were separate. Um, my daughter, our daughter-in-law, Sierra, was having a very bad week. She just started a new position at school, and she was very upset that weekend, and she said, I need some Jesus, and I said, I happen to know where there's a church, because my friend told me. So we sent her here Sunday morning, and we stayed home and kept the boys for her so she could attend, and when she came back, she said, um, I really think you should go with me, and I wasn't really sure how to take that. Um, because I didn't normally go to church, so the next Sunday I came with Sierra, and all the boys stayed home. And when I got home, I told Brad, um, I think you should probably go. Um, it was very, um, it was very moving. I had never felt God's presence like I felt it here. So, we're here. Yeah, and we look back on it, and there's just little things like my license plate it says MMC. I mean, just, we were pointed here, and every time we'd start wandering off the side, he's back over here, and we we were led here. We started the journey to move to Grove three years ago, 
and it took us a couple years. We had a lot of stuff to consolidate, sell, kind of get our positioning, um, changing jobs. And we came here, and we thought when we came here we were coming to enjoy the lake because that's what we had done the prior three or four years. So our goal was semi-retire, enjoy all the lake activities we can, have our family. And then about four months after we were here, we realized, well, we were placed here. God had a plan for us with Mountain Weaver's Church. But while we're here, we are going to enjoy the lake. But that's secondary. This is the first church I've ever been to that hands out invite cards. And I think it's a great idea. I mean, we're really big now on waitresses. You want a tip? Card comes with it. So, I mean, we know they're going to take it because we hand it to them with the tip. And we, she had the great idea of the Bassmasters Classic handing them out over there. Get a bunch of people in one location and just anytime you do things like that, God's going to move people. And it was her idea. I give all the credit to her. But we passed out a bunch of cards and we've seen results from it. For me, passing out cards is the one thing I know I can do. I'm so new to the Bible that I don't feel like I can go out and tell people and quote them scripture and convince them to come because I know the Bible. But what I do know is that I can give them an invite card and I can explain the feeling that they'll have when they get here and the family. But I can't, I don't have enough knowledge to talk to them about the Bible, but I can invite them. Our pastors, Brad and Misty, are awesome people. And I'll be honest with you, I had some reservations about the dynamic of having two pastors. But Brad and Misty complement each other so well. And I grew up in church. I know the Bible, but there's so many nuances that I missed when I was growing up because they weren't taught. And I've heard the Easter story all my life, literally all my life. And I learned more the past four weeks than I have the past four weeks. What really impressed me was I saw Sierra on fire again. I haven't seen her on fire like that in a long time. And I thought, man, we gotta go check this. We came and checked it out and felt felt at home from from the time I walked in the door. I don't don't know for sure how you felt when you walked in. We had had laid out from organized religion for a couple of years. We've been couldn't find anywhere that we felt at home. So um, when Sierra started coming here, and like you said, was just totally on fire for the Lord again. And we were so happy, we just, we had to come. We had to see what it was all about and to um, experience it for ourselves. And we, you know, we haven't left. Here, here's what uh, really, really for me, what kept me here was uh, it wasn't about religion. It was about our relationship with Christ. All the other churchy stuff doesn't exist here. It's about a relationship with Christ and leading other people to Christ. And uh, just that, you know, the, the Spirit is in this church. The Holy Spirit is in this church. There's, there's no denying it. If, if you spend any time in this church, and I don't mean the building around the, the church body, and you don't feel the spirit. You're missing out. You're in bad shape. You're missing out on the The messages on Sunday morning are a message that you can get your teeth into. It's it's meat, and it's it's a life message. I can take that message and chew on it all week and put it into action all week. And when Wednesday nights also, it's uh, I want to say down to my level. <laughs> so yeah, so hey, if it's down to my level, anybody can get it. It's, uh, it's fantastic. I haven't looked forward to uh, worship in a lot of years. I have not, and the worship at Mountain Rivers is just awesome. I haven't looked forward to, to hearing a message in a lot of years. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. 
perked up and when it's over, I'm thinking, oh man, it's over, man. A buddy of mine called when we were on our way over here to the, the lawnmower pole the other night. He said, hey, are you fishing? I said, no, I'm headed to church to a tractor pole. He said, what? Where are you going to church? I said, you gotta come check it out next year. I, I've not been to one, but uh, he will be here next year. There's no doubt, he'll probably have a mower here next year. And uh, you know, when, when, you, when you're passionate about something, is I feel like I am with this church body. You can't, when you're passionate about Christ, you can't help but to share it. And it's, it's been too long since I've been passionate about Christ. And it's awesome. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, to invite people to Mountain Movers, here's the deal. I've gone to churches that I'd have been embarrassed to invite somebody to. I can invite anybody to this church and not be embarrassed. And, you know, because it's, hey, you know, come... You, you know when we pulled up here and there's guys standing outside with signs saying, glad you're here. Jared and I looked at each other and thought, wow. <laughs> you know? And then there's uh, Cody or Jeff or Clayton standing out front and, and talk to you like they've known you all their life. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's, it feels like coming home and have never been here before. We were sitting at Isabella's restaurant in Anderson on Main Street. And when we were there, um, Andy and LaDonna McLean, they were sitting there too. And we recognized them and noticed them, but we didn't, we were just in our own conversation. And after we were done eating, they came up to us and they said, hey, do you guys go to church anywhere? Well, he Maybe. said, we don't want to make you, we don't want to take you from a church, but you ought to try our church. Yes. And so we asked what church, and they said, Mountain Weavers, Pastor Brad and Misty are wonderful people and you should try it. And so we, I said, we're going Sunday because I've been having trouble getting him back into church again. I've been going, but him, he's I, been I working. Hadn't, I hadn't been going regularly for a year. And yeah. when they said, when they invited me to church, it was like, yes, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, we're going. So, because I've been trying to get him back. So that Saturday night, he had to work late. And so we couldn't come to, we had to come to the second service. And that Saturday night, I was texting him. I'm like, remember, we have church in the morning. <laughs> and he's like, okay. So I said, we're going to go. He's like, yes, we're going to go. And that's how we found out about Mountain Okay. Uh, the first Sunday we came was, I can't describe it. Because we walked in the door and it was like, I'm home. This, the spirit in this in this building, you know, it's a little different than what I was used to. It was kind of dark, and then it was kind of bright, and then it was kind of loud. But I was like, "This is awesome," you know. <laughs> but the the first Sunday, I knew that this was where I was going to come. Just because maybe it was because I had been out of church for a year, and I was so hungry. But what I got fed was good, and I wanted to come back, you know. If I if I'd have got something bad, I wouldn't have wanted to come back the first Sunday. But the, the first Sunday, I just we we drove home just talking about church and and about God. It's not about church; it's about God, and and it's it's here. When I walked in that Sunday morning, you know, when you walk in and you have all the people greeting you, you could feel the love. When you walk through the doors, you feel the love and the and just the commitment here for people. And when I walked in the door and I just looked through the foyer there into the big screen behind us and I said and it was up there and it said a fresh start and I said and I just I get goosebumps. I'm like God's talking to me. He's he's here. We've been That's what we needed. We needed We needed. He didn't start. need it but we needed it. Mm -hmm. And he led us here. And it just when I saw that, I just knew. I was like, we're home. This is it. God brought us here. And then to come in and witness the energy and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the presence of God that's in this building is amazing and incredible. And to have our children, you know, to even feel it. When we left that day, 
nobody could get a word in edgewise because we were just talking nonstop and it just I get chills and goosebumps. The kids are kids and that hit us hard because they hadn't been going like we wanted them to go either. And so and and, it, and it, we don't want to miss. We 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 make this schedule work so we can be here every yeah. Sunday and every Wednesday and I don't wanna we don't wanna miss it. And it it Pastor Brad and Misty have just brought brought this to us along with everybody else in this church. And I've said this before, but I've been preached to my whole life, but I've never been reached until the sermons that I heard the first few weeks here. It sticks. It sticks. The, the way it's presented, and no matter who's bringing it, it sticks. And, and I go home and, and I ponder on it and I study on it and I, I, I read my Bible now. I pray now. Every day. And it wasn't like that before. I mean, I know the theme right now is contagious, but it was contagious from day one with us because I want I want people here. I want the people that that I that I know to come and experience this. And you know, I'm I'm putting the little cards up in the convenience stores around Anderson. And just today, I got to talk about our church around a big round table of guys drinking coffee because. One guy said, hey, where are you going to church? And it was like, oh, boom. <laughs> well, let me tell you where I'm going to church. Uh, you know, you're just not walking in the door and trying to figure out who is who or what, you know. And you're going to newcomers. You're meeting people there. We've never walked by anybody in this church when they haven't stopped, asked our name, and shook our hand. Happened to them. The minute I walked through the door and came in, as friendly as everybody was and everything, I just felt like I'd been here for years. Mm -hmm. The one that we love so much is Brandy. The Sunday that she was doing Get Out of Your Rut, I sat in that church and I felt the Spirit come over me. I just, and Bill and I talked about it when we got home and he said, I felt the same way. So, you know, it, it's just, I, I, I don't know, good teaching, good preaching. When we leave this church on Sunday, we're just like this, going home, mm -hmm. talking about it, about what's going on and everything else. And we're anxious when we get up to get ready and come to church. You know, I always think, Sadie, oh, tomorrow's church day. Hi, I'm Becky Castro, and I found Mountain Movers Church through my son. And um, his is a story that's a story all to itself. But um, I was born, raised Catholic, went to Catholic school, and baptized Catholic. And, and I still hold some of my Catholic beliefs. But one day my son was all dressed up, and I said, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to go down here to Mountain Movers Church. And I said, really? And I said, why didn't you tell me I'd go with you? Just because I'd love to be sitting in the pew as a family again. So anyway, the following Sunday, I came down to Mount Movers Church. And when I walked in, everybody was so friendly. I was thinking, wow, this is so cool. But what got me is when I walked into the sanctuary, I could just feel the Holy Spirit just engulf me. And so anyway, I thought to myself when we left after service, I thought I still have that tingling sensation because the Holy Spirit is still with me. And I have came back because of the people were so friendly and it was just like family and they made you feel at home. And then over the course of, I've been here about a year now, um, pastors Brad and Misty, I've come to realize they're not preachers, they're teachers. And they have actually taught me how to have a relationship with God. That is one thing that I never had in the Catholic Church. Um, there's a lot of good things about the Catholic Church, but I never knew that you should have a relationship with God. And um, my first big step in a relationship with God was taking the 15-minute challenge every day. So I downloaded my Bible app, and it had a daily, you know, read the, read the Bible in a year. 
and so I started it on January 1st of 2014 and I finished it January the, or December 31st of 2015 and read the whole Bible. Well, years ago when I read the Bible, it never really meant anything to me and, until I learned how to read the Bible. And what they had taught me was, you know, it's a story. And I love to read. I love to read stories. But I never loved to read the Bible until, I, until they put it in perspective for me that it's a story. I, I invite anybody that wants to come to Mountain Movers to find that Holy Spirit that, and the relationship with God that, that we have found here at Mountain Movers. And uh, my girlfriend the other last weekend that spent the weekend with me, she came. She said every time she comes over to spend the weekend with me, she'll be here on Sundays because she got that same perception that I got the first time I walked into Mountain Movers Church. That was, you felt the Holy Spirit and you felt like you were a part of a family. Because that's, that's really all it takes. Just tell your story. Just, just share the excitement of what God is doing. And you can make a difference in someone's life. Here's, here's the fact, okay? Is that for too long now, Satan has tried to stake his claims in our community. Right. He's tried to stake his claims with our children and with our schools. 
right? With our neighbors and our families. And enough is enough. Yeah. We can't just sit idly by and let him seek to steal and kill and destroy. What we have to do is we have to rise up as the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we have to spare no expense to win the lost, whatever the cost. Do you realize, and I said this a couple weeks ago, this is not about you. And this is not about me. This is not about us. It's about them. It's about the last, the least, and the lost. It's about those people that are hurting and hopeless and helpless in need of something tremendous. That's eternal life that's only found in Jesus Christ. So we have to rise up as a people. We have to, each and every one of us, do our part to share what God is doing. Because guess what? It's contagious. It's contagious. I want to tell you, you can do it. God has given you everything you need. He's given you all the tools you need. Just get in His presence. If I had some water right now or something, I'd do an illustration where we would just pour water into this cup until it filled to the top and we'd keep pouring it and pouring it and pouring it until that water is just overflowing and running out on the edges. Because here's what that represents. Every morning when you wake up, get in God's presence. Spend time with Him. In His Word. Spend time in worship. Spend time in prayer. And your cup will be filled. Right? All of that is just for you to be able to operate. Some people say they can't do life without a cup of coffee. They can't do their day without a cup of coffee. Right? Try a cup of God's glory all the way to Brim. Now that's just for you. What you have to do is you have to take it one step further and keep on pressing in for God's presence in your life because His presence is our priority. And as His presence flows out of your life and flows over the edges of your cup, your cup runneth over, then that means that people that are anywhere near you in your day are going to be infected with the goodness and the glory of Almighty God. You want to know one of the greatest compliments in the workplace? What is wrong with you? <laughs> why, are you why are you so happy? Right? Right? What? Why? Are, what is your problem? What is your deal, man? I can be awesome. Like what? Man, God is, God is so good. God is so good. They need to see it in your attitude. They need to see it in your actions. They need to see it in your words. They need to see it in your lifestyle. I'm like, Brad, that's huge. It's everything. I know, but it's simple. Fill your cup with God's presence and God's power. Take it with you wherever you go and just love people. Just love people wherever you go, wherever you are. And here's, Misty said this the other day. She's so right. We need to pray that God would give us those opportunities. Right? We need to mentally prepare ourselves and say, God, today. How many of you guys are bold enough to pray that prayer this week? Yeah. Every day that you get up, say, God, I'm about to do my day, about to go out of this house. God, I pray. That's when you know you're serious. Yeah. It's, we're like getting spiritual here. Oh, my word. It's crazy. Okay. All right, God, I'm praying that you would give me an opportunity today to get spooky, does it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to talk but here, about but in church, point. but then when you put it to prayer, it's real. And here, here's, when you say that, you're thinking to yourself, but I don't know enough. Like, I don't know enough of the Word of God. Right. I need someone to cry. Right. I don't know enough. But you know what? Janet said it so perfectly. She did. You don't have to know a lot. All you need to do is be able to share your story. You need to be able to take an invite card off your seat and say, you know what? I love this church. Get him here. We'll right. get him the rest of the way. You don't have to know a lot. You just have to be willing to share what God has done for you. The Bible says in that moment, in that time, when 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 you're you just don't know what to say, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will fill your mouth with the right words to say. You don't need to be a Bible scholar, although I, I pray that you would pursue his word diligently. But you don't need to know all of it. I don't know all of God's word, right? But you would not believe what God will put in your mouth in that moment. And if all you can say is, you know what? I can't explain it all. I just know it's awesome. It is so awesome. God is so good because they're going to see that in your life. And the Holy Spirit is going to flow through you and just contaminate them with the goodness of Christ. How many of you guys want that in your life? Yeah. See yeah. Would you stand up with me this morning? My prayer is that you would run with the vision that God has given you, the Great Commission, and contaminate somebody this week for the glory of God. We are life changers. You are a life changer because you have Jesus living on the inside of you. 
You have an opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. That's huge. That's huge. You don't have to be a pastor on a platform. You don't have to be a preacher or a teacher. God wants to use you. God's not using pastors, right? Pastors are a gift to the church, but it's the church that wins the lost, whatever the cost. It's the church that fulfills the great commission. You're powerful. You're powerful. God cannot wait to use you. He's, he is dreaming so big for you, you have no idea. And the dreams don't have to do with big houses and a nice car and, and, and a raise at work or a promotion. It doesn't have to do with any of that. It has to do with knowing Him and making Him known. Our days are numbered. This life is but a vapor. It's here and then it's gone. The only thing that really matters is that we have a real and life-changing relationship with Him that is contagious. And we spread the good news of Jesus Christ and who He is in our lives. You can do it. I'm telling you right now, you can do it. You can do it. I mean, you guys in this place would say, Pastor Brad, more than anything in my life, I want to be contagious in my walk. I want to make a difference in people's lives. I want to be. Can I see your hand this morning? Would you be honest enough to say that? Amen. I want to pray with you right now. Let's let's pray. Let's agree together. The Word says that we're any, we're any uh, are gathered together in His name. It shall be done. And really what that means is when we're in agreement about something that God is in agreement about, it will be done. This is what God wants. It's His Word. So we're going to pray together right now. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, we agree together as a body of believers. God, that you would just empower us with your almighty presence. Father God, fill our cups, Lord, to overflowing. That wherever we go, whoever we talk to, whatever we're doing, God, that we would take you with us. We may not have the words to say, God, but fill our mouths and bring those words through our lips in that very moment with the things that we need to say to make a difference in somebody's life. Help us to know you in a real and life-changing and an intimate, contagious way, God. And let those words make a difference that we would just love people. Help us, God. Help us this week. And I'm looking so forward to hearing the great stories that are to come of these contagious believers. Your head's bowed and your eyes still closed. Maybe you're here today and you would say, Pastors, I hear everything you're saying and it's exciting. And I want to be a part of that. But I don't have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. I prayed that prayer maybe at some point in my life or maybe you've never prayed it. But there's a difference in praying a prayer one time and having a real life-changing relationship with Jesus. This morning, if you want a relationship with Jesus that will change your life, that is authentic and real and powerful, you can have it. And this morning, we want to pray with you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to call you out. But we just want to know who you are by just raising your hand. And then we're going to lead you in a simple prayer. This church is going to pray with you. Because it is why we do what we do every single day. It's about leading people into that real relationship with Jesus. If you're here and you say, I want a real relationship with Christ that will change my life. On the count of three, I'm just going to ask you to throw your hands up. Then you can put them back down and we're going to pray. On the count of three. One, two, three. You want a real life change. Amen. I see your hands. Hands going up everywhere. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray this prayer with us. Say, Father God. Father God. I ask you this morning. I ask you this morning. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. To forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my sins. I want a real relationship. I want a real relationship. I want a life changing. I want a life changing. Experience. Experience. With you, Jesus. With you, Jesus. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Make this house. Make this house. My home. My home. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. 
Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.